start the recording and uh, want to introduce. Uh, so welcome everyone to the Pit, Pit Nug 15 minute webinar. Um, today's topic is preparing for 1099s in NetSuite. Our presenter today is Danielle Pistorius and Danielle is a senior consultant at Grossman, Yannick and Ford. Um, so Danielle, go ahead. Uh, the floor is yours. I'm going to go ahead and mute myself, but if you need anything, just, just shout out. Okay, great. Thank you, Rhonda, so yep. much. Um, hello, everyone. Happy Monday. I hope you had a wonderful weekend, and I'm sure everyone's in the preparation mode for the holidays, um, but a hot topic that'll be right around the corner is 1099 reporting. Um, and making sure that your NetSuite environment is ready and set up for that. As Rhonda said, my name is Danielle Pistorius. I'm a senior consultant in our group. Um, where is he? Okay, so just to go over an agenda for today, um, I know it's we have 15 minutes together and then we'll open it up for some questions, but we're just gonna go discuss an overview of 1099 management in NetSuite, um, vendor management, uh, GL expense account setup management, um, the third party providers that uh, NetSuite partners with, along with uh, the 1099 safe searches, and um, also including some references that you guys can leverage um, after the presentation. So just an overview, as of um, NetSuite's version of 18.2, um, NetSuite discontinued their 1099 reporting capability um, and they do not uh, support 1099 MISC form reporting directly out of NetSuite. However, what they do provide is customized safe searches to help you report um, your 1099 MISC and the NEC. Um, forms for the vendor payments to third party providers. Um, they also allow you to uh, manage within your vendor master uh, to keep track of the vendors that are 1099 eligible, um, their tax information, as well as um, coding specific GL accounts that are expense types um, to the specific 1099 missed categories. So for setting up vendor management in NetSuite for 1099 contractors, on the vendor record itself, um, you can navigate to the um, financial sub tab of the vendor record. Um, and there is a specific area for tax information where you can flag a vendor as 1099 eligible along with including their tax reference ID um, for the different um, clients or companies. Uh, another thing that you'll want to make sure um, as you're going through this process and updating you know, your vendor master is making sure that the vendor's address has been completed and filled out along with um, a phone number and an email address if applicable. Um, that what this will help you to do is whenever you are using those customized safe searches, they are going to be pulling information off of the vendor record itself. So it'll pull off the, um, the vendor's address um, along with like their tax ID um, for all of the vendors that are flagged as 1099 eligible. And if you want to revisit that, um, if you, you know, have set up NetSuite many moons ago, or if you are new to NetSuite, um, there is within the vendor master, um, the, under the views, there is a vendor financial view that comes with standard NetSuite that will show you um, a list of um, the 1099 eligible contractors. We've also included um, a quick sweet answer reference that goes through the setup of the vendor management as well. Um, uh, 
Another tool NetSuite has to offer for setting up for 1099 management in NetSuite is being able to assign a 1099 miss category to a GL account. Um, so whenever you are setting up a, your chart of accounts or you know creating a new expense account in NetSuite, um, you'll notice if you do select um, the account type expense or other expense, there is going to be a field available for 1099 miss category. Um, this is where you can select which box um, that the associated expenses would um, fall under. And this is really helpful from the standpoint of, you know, any transaction vendor payment in NetSuite, um, those safe searches, the custom searches will pull the particular dollar thresholds for that, that 1099 eligible contractor within those boxes. Um, so it's just a nice, it's, it's set up up front, but um, once you have that set up, it will flow into the report and make it a lot easier whenever it comes time to you pulling your 1099s um, for reporting. So the 1099 missed categories, um, to view a list of them in NetSuite, um, and if you want to edit the threshold assigned, um, that is going to be under the setup um, accounting accounting list area, and you can filter in the type for um, 1099 missed categories if you just want to see a list of um, the categories that NetSuite has applicable. Um, now you aren't able to add or delete any of the categories um, as they are are the specific categories that are um, provided by the IRS for the filings, um, but you do have the ability to update the threshold um, to make that more applicable, you know, for your reporting requirements. The next area I wanted to discuss, so once you have your vendors set up and your GL accounts coded, um, there are third party providers that NetSuite has partnered with um, to assist with 1099 reporting capabilities. And they will help you um, once you, know, you download and have the, the report saved um, and customize them. Um, and then you will export them and upload your filings to um, the third party provider that you're working with. Um, and they will really do the management for you of helping you file your forms, um, assist with um, applicable state agencies, um, and then also sending copies to your recipients. So that's where that um, making sure that you have the correct information set up on the vendor record that will be pulled into your report that you will then import um, and upload to the third party provider. Um, so the three ones that NetSuite um, has recommended is um, yearly, track 1099s, and SOVOS. So um, once you have decided the third party um, provider that you would like to move forward or work with, um, there are 1099 safe searches to report vendor payments in NetSuite. Um, so in order to get those safe searches, you will um, navigate to the um, Sweet Bundler search and install bundles. And if you type in the um, keyword search 1099 vendor payment reports um, and click search, it'll come up with a list of the um, third party vendors and their bundles, their um, 1099 vendor payment reports. Um, and they will include, um, I know Sobos is kind of broken out into two different bundles for the 1099 MISC and the 1099 NEC, um, but yearly and um, track 1099 also have um, both of the 1099 MISC and 1099 NEC reports. Um, so once you have selected um, your third-party provider, you'll just click on that bundle and go to install it. 
Um, and then once it is installed in your account, um, you'll be able to look within the global search or within report safe searches um, for that particular report name. Um, so you'll see, these are just the components of um, the safe searches that are included in those bundles. So the safe searches are um, customizable. Uh, they provide a summary of a 1099 vendor payments um, for a specific date range. So um, usually for the fiscal year, you do have the ability to adjust that. Um, you can edit the, the criteria as well as the um, search, the results of, of the saved search to meet your business requirements needs. Um, an example uh, uh, would be more so like if you wanted to include payments made by check, um, you could replace the date close field with the date field or so you can really work with it to modify it. Um, it will come canned um, and then there are kind of step-by-step -step instructions for updating those safe searches for, for the information that you need. Um, so the file format, whenever you do export it into CSV or Excel, um, those formats that they have are going to be acceptable by the third-party provider. So um, you won't have to make a ton of modifications, you know, once you have it exported to import back into them. Um, you are responsible, however, for the accuracy of the data you export and provide to the provider to report to the IRS. So you wanna make sure that you have validated um, the payments and, and you are comfortable before you actually upload that to the third party provider as they will be sending out your um, the forms to your the recipients. So the reports will include all of the vendor payments. Um, you might want to perform specific filtering required for you know vendors that aren't meeting that minimum threshold if you don't have that already set on your 1099 categories um, for the specific GL accounts. And on here, we included um, just some references for um, in NetSuite, different suite answer reference for just that follows through those third party providers and, and just making sure how to set up your environment. Um, we also included um, links to the three third-party providers that NetSuite partners with yearly, Track 1099 and Silvos, along with um, a link to the IRS for the 1099 MISC reporting requirements. Right. Do you? Does anyone have any questions? Um, I know we. Went through that pretty quickly, um, but anyone? And if you don't, have, go ahead. Yes. No, I was just going to say, anyone okay. have any any questions? Um, usually, the the group is usually pretty quiet. We don't get too many <laughs> questions, Danielle. But um, okay. and if you don't feel comfortable, or you know, come up with a question whenever you're looking at it down the road, please feel free to reach out to us. We um, would be happy to assist you or um, provide our guidance or um, expertise in, in assisting with modifying safe searches if you need help or um, just we're here to help. So if there's any you know questions that come up down the road, please don't hesitate to reach out. Yeah, absolutely. That's a good point. Yeah, no, anyone uh, just shoot me an email. I can get in touch with Danielle or anyone else from our group um, to answer questions. So uh, I will post the presentation on Pitnug probably next week. Well, maybe this week. Um, I'll try to do it this week. And then um, the presentation too, we'll, I'll send out with a, a follow-up at some point to our Pitnug members. So with that last chance, I am going to end our 
15 minute pit nug meeting. So thank you, Danielle. Appreciate it. Yep, no problem. All right, everyone. Nice. Have a wonderful holiday season. Yep, happy holidays. And uh, we will uh, talk to you guys soon. I'm, I'm hoping anyway. Thanks. Bye. Bye, everyone. Have a good day. Yeah.